welcome to the Fire Emblem segment of who is the best Super Smash Bros. character in speed, strength, ability, uh, etc, etc, etc. Yay! So, Fire Emblem is probably one of the most controversial um, franchises in Super Smash Bros. Uh, just because there's an argu argument of there are way too many Fire Emblem characters. Um, the way I see it, um, the reason there are so many Fire Emblem characters is because in every new Fire Emblem game, you roughly get about 20 to 40 new characters. And a lot of the characters aren't even reused most of the time from game to game. So, um, it's kind of the same with Pokemon. I think there's too many Pokemon in Smash Bros, but if you look at the amount of Pokemon that appear in the games, it makes sense that they have a full, um, eight characters. There's also the argument that now you can have eight player Smash with just Fire Emblem characters with the addition of Byleth. However, most people don't realize that you can also have eight player Smash with Pokemon and with the Mario franchise, and no one's complaining about that. In fact, other people want more Pokemon reps and Mario reps. It's just the fact that a lot of the Fire Emblem characters look really similar to each other that people don't like them. And they also play kind of similar, because most of them are swordsmen. Um, a couple of them, like Robin and Byleth, are not full-on swordsmen, but just because they're just another sword character, people just don't like it. And they also look really similar. So. At the very beginning of the Fire Emblem uh, franchise, it was a really unique RPG because of um, if your character were to die in battle, they would die permanently. Because most RPGs, you uh, would lose a character in battle and you could revive them like afterwards. But in Fire Emblem, if your character's health points hit zero, they're dead. You can't return them or get them back. They're gone for, for good. So that's what set Fire Emblem apart from most other RPGs at the time. And I personally have seen a little bit of gameplay for Three Houses and Radiant Dawn, but other than that, I haven't exactly like gotten really deep into Fire Emblem. However, since it is an RPG-based game, uh, a lot of it's really well documented, and I get a lot of stats and information from the wiki. So if there's a Fire Emblem fan out there who probably knows a lot more than I do, please contact me and let me know if I got anything wrong within these next couple of episodes. So the style of how Fire Emblem games work, um, it's kind of like a square-based system. So if you want to face this one guy over here, you have to select your character, select the path in which it takes to get to this enemy, and then they have to select the attack they're going to do. Uh, also, because it is a RPG, there is a lot of lore and um, deeper meaning to a lot of the stuff. And I took that into context uh, just because most Fire Emblem games are self-contained stories, usually. Um, very little times do we get a, a sort of like crossover event. I know there's a couple crossover Fire Emblem games, but for the most part it's mostly just a self-contained story with self-contained lore, usually, and most Fire Emblem, Fire Emblem games take place um, centuries apart from each other, but there are a little bit of crossovers and such. There's a lot of lore and stuff, so I'm able to compile this all. Okay. I was able to put um, most of the characters against each other pretty easily, just based on stats and feats alone, because I had a lot of access to that. However, um, usually in Fire Emblem you fight as a unit and not just as an individual person. So a lot of their best feats, per se, are kind of them as a unit. Like, they fought a dragon and killed the dragon as a unit. They've done their own feats by themselves, but most of the time they're fighting together as a unit. So, with that being said, we're going to start off with the... Not a character, we're going to start off with the Falchion. So... The reason we're going to start off with the Falchion is because several of our characters wield the Falchion. It is kind of a very important sword, uh, especially to um, Marth's family line. Uh, in Super Smash Bros, uh, the characters that wield the Falchion are Marth, Lucina, and Krom. And that's, it's a pretty important sword because it is one of the more powerful um, swords in the game. And it's also been passed down through generations. Uh, it's made from dragon teeth, and it's made to use to, like, slay dragons. And depending on who wields the Falchion, there are different types. Like, Lucina has a parallel Falchion. It can be used to recover HP in battles. And it's very picky about who it chooses to, um, wield. Like, who gets to be the wielder. Just because, um, there... <laughs> Back when Fire Emblem was first created, the um, company made a real-life Falchion, like they had a blacksmith forge a real-life Falchion, that is stored up in a museum in Japan currently. Um, and certain users can't wield certain variations of the Falchion. Like, um, Krom cannot wield Lucina's parallel Falchion. Usually the Falchion needs exalted blood to be wielded by 
So that's why most of the characters um, that wield it are either lords or nobles or princesses. Um, if it's not with its correct user, it will not work for that user. So if Chrome is trying to wield the Parallel Thalcian, it will not work for Chrome. And it needs to be awakened. So you have to perform a ritual with a Fire Emblem usually to awaken the power of the Falchion. The Falchion can also be found in the Kirby universe as one of Kirby's um, swords. There's a fun little Easter egg. And it is passed down through generations. Um, we'll talk about that a little bit more when we get to the um, Lucina and Krom situation. And um, that is the Falchion, kind of in a nutshell. This is not a Falchion. Uh, this is just my sword that my dad uh, bought in Spain. That being said, let's talk about the first Falchion wielder of the franchise, Marth. Our first Fire Emblem character is Marth. From the original Fire Emblem game, Shadow Dragon. Important things to know about Marth, he is the hero king and legendary warrior of Altea. Um, he does wield the Fire Emblem, which is not a sword, but rather a shield with crests that in it that give immense power to the user and can also awaken the Falchion. Um, he woke up the dragon Tiki, which is important because of Fire Emblem lore, and she also appears way further down the line in Awakening, which is where Krom and Lucina and Robin all dwell. Um, Marth commands an army, as most of these characters do, and he has the Binding Shield, which gives him plus two stats, and within Fire Emblem, we do get a lot of, like, stats and stuff for characters, uh, since it is an RPG. He and his unit have defeated Earth Dragons, which is pretty impressive, uh, because to take down a dragon, it takes a lot of force and skill, especially in the Fire Emblem universe. His most notable traits are he is very kind-hearted, uh, he's a good leader, and he's a very idealistic leader, and he always takes into account, like, his men and his unit in general. He doesn't like to fight unless it's necessary. Like, he will do most anything in his power to avoid a fight, because he knows his men will get hurt. Sometimes Marth, though, is overly trusting. This does end up giving getting him into some problems here and there, but for the most part, being a kind-hearted kind of dude works in his favor. But he can be overly trusting sometimes, and that does lead to some downfall. He can do an awful lot of damage to dragons because of his Falchion. Uh, the Falchion is one of the main ways a lot of these characters can take down dragon, uh, dragon-like creatures, just because it's made specifically by Naga to, uh, kill off some dragons and such. In his game, he is a more of a mediocre unit. He's not exactly the best and not exactly the worst. He's mostly just mediocre, especially at the beginning, with his stats being pretty low. He also is of the Lord's, uh, class, which, um, doesn't exactly give him the best advantage in battle, I'm assuming. I don't know. I haven't actually played Fire Emblem. Please don't sue me. He does have good attacks and speed, though, for being such a mediocre unit. He cannot kill anything of the legendary class, however. One of his downfalls is um, he is weak against blue units. However, we don't really have any blue units within uh, any of the other characters, uh, simply because most, as I said, most Fire Emblem games are self-contained in lore and such. His tiara thing came from his sister. Uh, and he always wears it just to have a reminder of her. But that also makes a lot of people think, oh, you're wearing a tiara and you look like a girl. He's really not. One of his better attacks is escape route where he can escape from a battle. So, that's kind of useful, I guess. That's wise um, I took the base stats of all of the characters and, like, their top stats that they can earn in a game, and I kind of just averaged it out. Um, and then I took their greatest feats and such. But Marth kind of led an empire for a long time, and his descendants carry on in his name even thousands of years after Marth is long gone. Uh, I'm gonna post his stats off to the side here, right there, that's his stats if you want to look at them. Uh, they're pretty mediocre-ish. Stats-wise, we start off with, uh, the level's gonna be the first one, HP, STR, skill, speed, attack, defense, and resistance. Usually, across every Fire Emblem game, that is roughly about the same stats. There are a couple of, like, weird ones, like there's magic in some, and there's a couple other things for others. But overall, Farth Marth, Marth is a pretty good character to start us off with the Fire Emblem 
uh, franchise. And he also is, um, yeah, pretty good person overall. So with that being said, we're going to jump over to our other melee boy, Roy. Roy is one of the youngest Fire Emblem characters, if not the youngest Fire Emblem character, at the age of 15. He has, he's fought bandits, he has weapons to kill dragons, and he is the commander of the Rucherian army. I'm sorry if I pronounced that really bad, but anyway. He does have a Fire Emblem, and his sword is the Binding Blade, which um, has dragon slaying powers. So he can slay a dragon with his sword, which will be useful uh, if he ever had to fight Corrin in real life. One of his really good skills that he has are in A rank, he's, his sword can like light on fire, and uh, he can use fire-based attacks. Um, he also has healing powers, and he, a mercenary skills, as well as immense power. One of his notable traits is he's very loyal to his family, he never gives up, and he's idealistic and very loyal to all of the people he knows. And he always wants to make sure that they're going to do okay. Stats-wise, he starts out as a lord, and he um, can upgrade to a great lord. But overall, his stats are kind of in the middle, per se. They're not exactly the best stats, they're not exactly the worst stats, they're just pretty okay stats. Overall, Roy is pretty awesome for being a young Fire Emblem kind of dude. Up next, we're gonna talk about Ike. Ike is the leader of the Grey Mercenaries and has quite a few accomplishments underneath his belt. One of his major accomplishments is that he beat the Black Knight, which is almost like a godlike entity in the Fire Emblem universe. One of his best weapons is his Aether ability, um, which is not just unique to him, but he actually uses it kind of the best out of all of the Fire Emblem characters that can use it. Personality-wise, he is blunt yet passionate. He really doubts himself in being a leader, especially um, a leader of a group of mercenaries. However, he does eat a ton and he is passionate about fighting. Stats-wise, he is locked only to swords. However, he is well known as the strong burly swordsman. So if he needed to, he could use hand-to-hand -hand combat. He actually can't use any sort of magical really attacks and he's kind of like immune to magic attacks uh, just because um, he doesn't like to use magic or he can't really do much magic. His sword is the Holy Blade of Ragnarill, which makes him more of a close range fighter, which is like one to two-ish units away from the other person. Because as I said before, Fire Emblem usually fights on like grid based kind of system. And he is a really close range fighter, so. He does have um, Andalil armor that can't be harmed by really normal weapons or normal means so it's pretty OP armor. Two main classes are ranger and lord so um, he starts out as a ranger and then can upgrade to a lord as is kind of like max stat sort of thing. That's why he actually has some pretty good stats and I will post those right here as so you can take a look at them but compared to most other Fire Emblem characters He's probably in the top three, at least, just because of how insanely powerful this Black Knight he took down was. He hasn't really defeated any dragons, as to my knowledge, so that kind of does put him a little bit lower on the scale, but still, beating the Black Knight is almost the equivalent to taking down a dragon. And I know that in Super Smash Bros, there is a three-year difference between the alternate costumes. However, that doesn't exactly really affect his stats and stuff as much as you would think it would be. So I'm going to count um, the, the three year gap between both of the Ikes as like not really important because it doesn't really affect how the character, um, how strong the character is, even though there is like a three year difference between the two. So anyway, that is Ike in a nutshell. Um, next time we will be talking about the descendants of Marth, which are uh, Krom, Lucina, may or may not be Robin, depending, we'll get to that. So, until next time.